one of the chief benefits of a image CDN is reducing that image payload. That reduction in uh, image payload uh, leads to a faster page load speed. And typically we see that in 70, about, about, uh, it, it, of several seconds accelerated. Uh, we'll go through a couple of case studies at the end of this, but in many cases we see up to 80% smaller image payload if you're starting with an unoptimized image beforehand. And then on the business impacts, um, what can a, a faster uh, image CDN do for you? It can increase your uh, rankings in search engine uh, layouts. We, we typically see that uh, many of our customers uh, report back, that they, they move up several notches because Google takes into account how fast your website is uh, in part of their algorithm of the search ranking. Um, you'll also see other business metrics like the bounce rate, the conversion rate, your revenue. <laughs> uh, all of these will, will improve. Um, but on the back end, there's also some benefits. There's the benefit that the workflow that you're going through to take an image, to resize it, potentially either manually or uh, jointly or, or sequentially uh, compress uh, and optimize to the best of your abilities, uh, set, set the breakpoints. All of that is a complicated workflow that takes up a lot of labor and at the end of the day isn't necessarily effective. Uh, all of that can be simplified and replaced by an image CDN like Image Engine. And then finally, uh, you get lower CDN costs. Um, we see that um, many of our customers who are paying from a traditional CDN, because we're reducing the payload down by so much, they end up paying less because we charge on a bytes delivered basis. And if you only have you know 80% of the bytes going out the door, your bill goes down. So what is an image CDN? Well, when we talk about image engine, uh, most people are, are familiar with a content delivery network. Here, the concept is that you're taking your content, your images, and pushing them to edge servers around the world. Geographically, you're co closer to the customer and the delivery time is faster. Well, this is all well and good. A traditional CDN uh, works to accelerate your website. But there's more that you can do. You can optimize the images that are going there. So you're, you're, you have a, a lower latency, you have less payload, you have a faster page load time if you optimize the images. Well, to optimize the images effectively, you need a third component. And that's the secret sauce for much of what Image Engine does. It's this device awareness. The, we had identify any device coming to uh, your website, uh, are the edge servers of our content delivery network will identify, is this a Samsung S7? Oh, well, if it's the, a Samsung S7, it has about 15 different parameters associated with it. And we can take the original image and tailor it down specifically to that device model. And then we'll deliver it from our edge servers cache it so the next time a Samsung S7 comes, it's ready to go right there. So with those three concepts in, uh, in working in tandem as a seamless service, uh, what you get is uh, these two concentric circles. Typically what needs to happen when someone comes to the website, uh, the image is requested, uh, getting a little deeper into the technology here, uh, there's a DNS redirect that happens that sh shows it to the, um, the image engine network. And, and we have a device aware image CDN here that will automatically identify the type of requesting model. And if the image is already optimized and on that server, and 98% of the time it is, it will deliver the optimized image from the cache. So is there a WebP version of this that is already 
ready to go. If it's not, <clears throat> we will go back to your master images and those can be anywhere. You don't have to move your images. Uh, they might be on Amazon uh, AWS's S3 buckets or they might be somewhere in your, your website directory. Um, and we will pull that master image dynamically as needed and optimize it and keep it in cache once we optimize it for faster delivery the next time. So one of the things that really makes us different is this DNS uh, modification. Uh, it's a simple one-time integration. People ask us, you know, how difficult is it to do, to do this? And typically uh, it can be a 10 minute process. If you're set up and have access to your, your DNS, um, we can get you up and running with this image CDN. Um, the uh, device awareness on the the uh, the CDN edge servers is very distinctive. Not any other service really has this level of device detection that uh, allows you to optimize uh, multiple versions. Yeah, the, the typical approach in the industry today is you'll take the 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 master image and optimize it to three different sizes, desktop, laptop, mobile. Uh, we end up optimizing that for whoever actually requests it, but typically we're somewhere north of 12 to 15 for every image that is requested. Um, you can leave the images in your current location. And we also are distinctive in the way that we can optimize to the new next-gen formats, not only WebP, but we also do JPEG 2000 for iPhones. So how much optimization in terms of payload savings can you get? Well, this is a snapshot of the performance that we were getting in the last month uh, for looked at from the uh, perspective of what is the final image format that gets delivered. So most of the traffic we see is coming from Chrome, whether that's desktop or whether that's on the mobile Android devices. Um, but we get about a 79% payload reduction for all the images that we're seeing there. Likewise for Safari, uh, for JPEG 2000, we get a 71% smaller. In some cases, we leave the images in the format they came to us. So you see that JPEG and PNG are also here. Uh, about 52% smaller for JPEGs uh, that we keep in that format. And likewise, about 48% for PNGs we keep in that format. I'm also showing uh, the MP4s here. So one of the things that we can do is translate GIFs, which uh, really old, <laughs> GIFs are a very old file format, very inefficient, but popular for you know animated GIFs we can take the animated GIFs and put them into a much more efficient format, whether that's MP4 or an animated WebP. And that takes about 89% uh, out of the equation. Uh, a couple of other uh, features that we have uh, are listed here, but I'm gonna move ahead and hand it over to Yonarn to uh, walk you through what the setup looks like for this and I'll stop sharing and let him go for it. Thank you. Um, while I'm sharing my screen here, we do also have a Q&A uh, section on the, on the webinar here. Uh, so feel free to type any questions in there and we'll try to address them as, uh, as we move along. Uh, we had one question here whether WebP is supported by, by all browsers, uh, which is a very good question, and um, uh, it's not. It's currently supported by, uh, by Chrome and, uh, and Firefox, uh, and other Blink-based browsers too, but this is also uh, sort of the, uh, a, a key component to Image Engine. Uh, you as a content owner uh, doesn't have to worry about your which browser support which uh, image formats and so on. Your origin image, the master image can be JPEG or PNG or, or whatever. And then um, Image Engine will, based on the 
uh, device and browsers cap capabilities, you know, which file formats and, and, and so on is, is most uh, efficient, effective for this specific browser, will uh, automatically convert and optimize the image accordingly. So even if your uh, origin image is a, is a JPEG, for instance, the image engine will still serve uh, WebP to browsers and devices supporting that. So yeah, what I'm going to do <clears throat> uh, in this section is to walk you through how to get started with the with Image Engine. Um, and uh, on our webpage, Image Engine IO, uh, you can uh, you can sign up for a free trial. The trial is uh, uh, yeah, it's free for uh, thirty or even sixty days, um, and uh, there's no credit card needed. To, to get started and, and kick the tires. So for this, uh, for this section, I've prepared a simple web shop. Um, yeah, it doesn't do, do much other than displaying some, uh, some images and, uh, and things. So we're gonna use this as a, uh, as a demo through the, uh, the process here. Um, I'm gonna copy this uh, this URL, we can share all this uh, in the show notes afterwards, of course. Uh, when I sign up, I want to uh, click the free trial uh, button here, and this is where I paste my uh, the URL or the host name of, uh, of my website. Um, then we click uh, continue, and this is where we create the actual, uh, actual account. Uh, you may have uh, a central mobile account already, then uh, then you can log in here, or you can uh, log in with the GitHub, or uh, actually also uh, also Google. Um, there we go. And now I have logged in with the with the GitHub, and then the next section is where uh, I have to provide where my origin images are stored, and this is where the first step sort of comes uh, uh, comes back because in the background here we have now. Uh, crawled the original site that I, I give up the, the, the web shop demo and I can pick uh, I can pick uh, an image origin from this list here if if there's another origin you're, you're rather used you can of course type this into uh, into the box here as well um, but for yeah for the purpose of uh, our uh, demo site we're going to use this and then we're going to complete the configuration and this is, uh, <coughs> this is it. Uh, now we have a fully working image engine account. You have got assigned a, an image engine host name, which looks, uh, looks like this. And this is a, uh, yeah, an image uh, demoing that it's actually, uh, actually, actually working. So we can copy and paste this, this URL to a new tab here and see how it, uh, how it looks. And uh, there it is. So now this image is being served from uh, from Image Engine. Uh, next, um, next thing you'd, you'd have to do then is to change your image uh, image tags, you know, the markup uh, on the website. Uh, we'll return to that how, how that is done in uh, in Magento, um, but to reflect this uh, this Image Engine hostname instead of the of the current hostname. But first, I wanted to show you a little bit around in the uh, in the control panel. Uh, how it looks. So we click the control panel button, and this is now I have oh, multiple trials going here, but uh, uh, this is the one that I, I just created. <clears throat> and this is how then the, uh, the dashboard uh, looks. And we see here all my domain names are listed and also all my uh, origins. Uh, you can add more domain, say, domain names here if you, uh, if you want to, even if you're on a, on a trial. Um, and there are yeah, different configurations here you, uh, you can add to, uh, add to this domain name. Uh, you can choose whatever domain name you, uh, you want here. Uh, and, with, and, and this you can, um, on, on higher, uh, higher tier accounts, you can also uh, use your DNS to um, to direct traffic to, to this, this domain. Um, other things you can do on the domain, if you click settings, you can apply or add different 
settings or, or adjust the default behaviors of how image engine works. This is similar to most CDNs that you uh, that you find out there. You can adjust the uh, you know, cache TTL, uh, and more specifically to to images, you can also uh, adjust the, the default size and the quality of the images, uh, and all this kind of um, kind of stuff. Um, we're not going to do that right now. The last thing I wanted to show you in here is the uh, is the origin. Uh, this is the the origin of the site that we uh, that we just created. Uh, you can add uh, more origin if you origins if you want to, uh, even S3 buckets if um, if you use uh, if you use that, uh, or regular uh, HTTP or HTTPS uh, based buckets, and you can. Uh, if, if they're password protected or on a specific port and, and things like this, you can also uh, add that configuration to the, uh, to the origin configuration. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. So, so it takes you know, just a few, minute, few minutes to get image engine, your in, image engine account uh, ready for use. Uh, and now the next step, uh, next step was to uh, change the image URLs you know, now, now image, images has to be served from uh, a host name like this. Or even you know, if you're using, the, using your own DNS to create a CNAME record, like Ken, uh, Ken mentioned, you would uh, then replace the image engine host name here with your, uh, your custom, uh, custom host name. Um, but uh, yeah, before, before we go there, I wanted to also mention quickly the, um, uh, the demo tool that we have here. Oops, that was wrong. Let me just copy. Uh, the demo tool shows you uh, what Image Engine can do to your, uh, to your page in terms of optimization. Uh, we'll share the links uh, in, in the notes afterwards as well. Uh, so you paste the URL of your site that you want to optimize in here, and you simply click uh, Analyze. And uh, this tool is now loading the web page uh, with and without Image Engine, so so that we're able to compare the current situation with what it will be with uh, with Image Engine installed. Uh, with this test, we're running uh, the test with a Samsung Galaxy J, uh, J3 over 4G connection. Um, yeah, now I'm only running the the mobile test, but we do also. Uh, support desktop tests, uh, desktop um, tests, of course. And I have a so just to uh, keep us from waiting. I have uh, uh, a test here already uh, finished uh, on the very same same page here, and we see that Image Engine is able to reduce the payload quite significantly by seventy two more than seventy two percent, which also leads to a faster page load time and a much improved uh, speed index on uh, on mobile devices. And further down here, we have uh, also a video that we can see um, and compare the two, uh, two runs. So that was, uh, that was mobile, and uh, on desktop, we see similar, similar results. And we also have the, uh, the video here. Uh, yeah, so we clearly see that Image Engine is, uh, is doing, its, uh, doing its job. So returning to uh, the next step, we have our Image Engine account uh, and we have the Image Engine hostname. And now we need to change the um, image references in, in the Magento shop. Uh, and we have uh, all this is documented on, um, on our documentation portal, uh, Image Engine IO slash docs. And um, we have, yeah, for, um, there are, Probably, or maybe there's some of you using Magento One still, but we'll focus on uh, on Magento Two uh, for this session. Um, we have uh, we have a plugin as well for uh, for Magento. Uh, this you can, if you go to the marketplace uh, of Magento, you can simply search for uh, Image Engine and click that, and you. Um, and you can uh, you can download the uh, the plugin from here. So uh, let's uh, uh, let's look through how we can install or configure this uh, this plugin. Um, yeah, first step of course is to um, 
is to uh, yeah, connect your Magento instance with, uh, with the marketplace and, and um, download the plugin from there. And then when installing it, you uh, um, uh, go into the systems, uh, systems uh, menu on the, um, in the admin and uh, web setup uh, wizard. Then next, you choose the extension manager. And um, yeah, to, just to be sure that the plugin is, uh, is available, then first hit, uh, hit re refresh. And then, uh, then you hit the uh, review and install uh, button like this. You see that uh, this is a little bit small, maybe this is better. So this is how the plugin will look in the, in the list. And uh, now we hit the install button here. And then lastly, we need to verify that the plugin is, uh, is enabled. And we do that by going to the Magento uh, manager. And uh, uh, yeah, that was the wrong image. It should be this image. So here we see that uh, the Magento plugin is, um, is enabled and on. You can also do this through uh, through the command line if you if you prefer that uh, using uh, using Composer. This is how you how you do that. And then next, when we go to the actual configuration, this is uh, similar to the uh, to the manual configuration as well uh, without the without the plugin. You go to stores and configuration, and uh, uh, then you'll be presented with a uh, an image like or a, a screenshot like this. Uh, the important part here is the image engine media URL. This is where you paste in the image engine host name that we got in uh, uh, in this uh, in the sign up section here. So that would be you know, in, in our case, it would be uh, what I just highlighted now. So copy and paste that into. Uh, oops, into into this section. And what this plugin does is to change the uh, base media URL uh, in your Magento settings, which will make uh, Magento serve images through uh, through this this hostname. And this this hostname can be the uh, imgeng.in uh, domain, or it can be your own uh, C named hostname if you prefer to use your your own DNS. And uh, of course, yeah, you enable and disable the, um, the plugin in the select uh, button uh, or select box above, and then you save the, save the configuration. And that's, uh, that's about it. Um, and then of course you have to verify that it's, you know, images are actually being served from, uh, from Image Engine. Uh, you can do this either, of course, by you know, inspecting or you know, viewing source on your, on your web page, or you can see, log on to the Image Engine control panel that would just, uh, uh, that we just went through and see if, if traffic is, is flowing in the statistics uh, section. And uh, yeah, this was the this was the plugin uh, plugin way of integrating Image Engine. If we have a look to um, look on how um, how this can be done with uh, just using the configuration. Uh, which may be a, uh, you know, also a very good, good option. This is uh, you know, your, uh, whatever is your, your preference. Um, yeah, we go, to, uh, we go to stores and then click uh, um, configuration. And in the general settings, we click web. And this is, uh, you know, you're probably familiar with this, uh, this section of, uh, of Magento. Uh, the purpose here is that we want to change the uh, the base URLs, like like we also did with the with the plugin, so we're uh, we're again we're looking for the base URL of user uh, media files, uh, where which we also here should then paste in our image engine uh, hostname that we just got assigned, uh, and this will then 
uh, yeah, change the uh, change the base URL from which uh, files are, are image files are being stripped. Um, and some um, some may have other types of files, not only images stored in the um, uh, in the same location here, uh, which is fine. Image engine can serve CSS and JavaScript and uh, fonts and, and things like this too. And we will actually also uh, optimize these by by compressing. Up Compressing them either with uh, GZIP or, or Brotly, depending on, on browser support. Uh, so, so it doesn't have to be only images. Image Engine can uh, can still serve and optimize other kinds of uh, of content. So you don't have to worry about um, your site breaking down. So yeah, changing the URL for for media files here with um, uh, by pasting in the Image Engine uh, hostname you got at the end of the of the sign up. Uh, and then, as a last step, you may have to uh, flush the cache for this to uh, to uh, uh, to go live. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. So the whole setup here is uh, is uh, pretty easy. To to summarize, you go to uh, you go to Image Engine uh, Image Engine IO. You click the free trial button. You enter the URL or the uh, host name or URL of the front page of your uh, website. Um, and this is used to, uh, to help the sign-up process here to determine the origin images, uh, uh, the location of the origin images. Um, doesn't have to be uh, correct at, the, you know, at this first stage because once you have created the account, you can always log into uh, the control panel and create new domains and new uh, new origins and even change the existing origins. Um, yeah, so that is uh, about it. This web page also features the uh, the documentation page here. We, there's a, a quick start guide, and also uh, when it comes to the uh, control panel, there's also a um, yeah, documentation on how you uh, navigate uh, the control panel and how you create domain names and, uh, and origins and, and things like this. Cool. Um, right. Unless there are any specific questions to this uh, section, I'm uh, done. <laughs> okay. Uh, why don't you stop sharing and I will take back over. Uh, and I will I will uh, talk briefly about uh, one of our cases of uh, a client that we actually is based in India today, uh, LiveSpace, which is a uh, furniture um, e-commerce site. They implemented uh, the Image Engine Image CDN, and they saw. Uh, a huge reduction in the payload uh, on a per page site uh, um, basis. They went from uh, 2.5, or no, this is, I'm sorry, this is overall site. They, they were delivering about 2.5 gigabytes, or 2,500 gigabytes per month, and they took it down to only 256, so about an 89% uh, smaller reduction. Uh, and they cut the average load time of their website in half. They were running pretty slow at around 13 seconds and were able to take it down to a very competitive uh, 6.3 seconds. And because of that, uh, they saw a huge uh, improvement in their mobile conversions and their desktop conversions. Um, and their SEO rankings on the some of the key terms that they were uh, trying to compete for uh, saw about a 230 increase. So the, 230% increase. So that means they probably leapfrogged uh, several pages in terms of uh, where they were coming in on the, the search engine. And uh, in addition to that, they saw a you know, reduction in the bounce rate and the time spent on the site. So uh, a couple of FAQs. Uh, and, and if people have questions, uh, go ahead and use the Q&A uh, button and uh, type them in. Uh, and I will, uh, you know, I'll read these out uh, the, and try to address them. One of the the questions that came in 
uh, is actually our first FAQ. Uh, so good planning there. Uh, it's a very typical question. I, I'm already on a CDN. Uh, how will Image Engine work? Um, the or you know phrased differently, can I use Image Engine with my current CDN? We typically find that yes, you can use Image Engine alongside uh, an Image CDN or a traditional CDN today. There might be reasons you're uh, you want to keep that f uh, for you know various. Uh, it might might come with your package of hosting. Um, there might be a business reason, but from a technical reason, it's best if Image Engine can look directly at your site and without the uh, your current CDN uh, in the pathway. Um, and we actually provide a lot of the security benefits that you might get with your 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 current CDN. So we find that a lot of uh, clients, yes, they can use it side by side. Um, but they start scratching their head at the end of the day and say, why do I need this <laughs> other CDN? Um, but there, there might be business reasons that you, you choose to do that, and it's quite possible to set things up uh, to do that. Uh, I don't know, Jan Arne, do you want to add anything there? I'm not sure we want to get into the technical details of how you do a side-by-side -side setup. <laughs> Um, no, the, the, um, uh, you know, the simple answer is uh, you know, yes, you can, you can use Image Engine together with your existing CDN, either side by side or in front of or even behind. Uh, but there are uh, yeah, you know, things that have to be done, especially if you, uh, if you want to use Image Engine behind the existing, uh, existing CDN. And the reason for this is that Image Engine uh, will of course produce multiple versions of the same image, uh, 10, 15 different versions uh, of different sizes, different compression rates, different file formats and so on, uh, which uh, most current CDNs out there on the market today uh, uh, is incapable of caching just because that they don't do the uh, device detection and browser uh, detection like, like Image Engine does. Uh, but there are there are workarounds. Uh, but the, yeah, the short answer is yes, you can use Image Engine together with other other CDNs. But uh, we highly recommend that Image Engine is the only CDN uh, when it comes to images because that's that's when you will get the best uh, performance. Okay. Uh, another question that is frequently asked is, do I need to upload my images to you? Uh, this is a lot of people think that Image Engine is more than a CDN, it's a um, content or a device, uh, digital asset management pl uh, um, platform. And although we perf perform many of the tasks in terms of directives and being able to resize uh, and uh, um, manage uh, the way your images are displayed, one of the beauty uh, of image CDN is that you don't need to upload your images anywhere. You can leave them where they are um, and we can uh, directly tap into that image origin. Uh, one other question was, um, what happens when I refresh uh, an image? Uh, how do I, need, how do I uh, deal with that? And I think, I think there's kind of two parts of that. One is if I add a new image, um, how does that handled? Or if I refresh it, do I need to probably uh, flush the cache? Um, there's a kind of two parts of the same question. Yonar, do you want to address that one? Sure, sure. So uh, yeah, if you add new images, brand new images uh, to your Magento uh, web shop, um, these images will still be referred to through Image Engine. So that will be uh, you know, the first request will be a cache miss. And in those, uh, in, the, in that, uh, scenario, Image Engine will uh, fetch this image from uh, the origin, which is your Magento, Magento instance, um, before it's cached on the on the CDN and optimized, and then returned to the end user. Next request, of course, is a uh, is a cache hit. So then we're back to normal normal operation. Uh, if this uh, this image was uh, uh, you know, it was you know, a mistake or you know, it was uh, you need to publish a uh, you know updated version of this image. Uh, you would do that uh, the same way as you normally do in uh, in Magento, um, and uh, yeah, like with any other CDN, uh, it, it will take some time before this image is then you know, refreshed in the in the cache. Uh, if this is uh, urgent, you can uh, through the Image Engine uh, control panel flush uh, flush the cache. Um, so this this is also standard functionality. 
uh, very similar to how other uh, other CDNs work. Uh, we do also uh, we do also offer an API to do this. Okay. Um, another question is, you know, what sort of security does it support? Uh, HTTPS and all. Although you probably saw that in the integration, I should highlight it that yes, uh, we provide HTTPS out of uh, each TTPS out of the box for uh, Image Engine. Um, if you want to configure a custom domain name, uh, there's a process you go through to create a SSL certificate um, that needs to be verified and and uh, passed on to you for if there's a so you can put it in your DNS for a DNS C name redirect. Um, but yeah, I think the 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 the, um, the short answer is yes. We we support HTTPS, and you know it's the standard that we we provide. Uh, then finally, how much does it cost? Uh, I think the the question uh, is best answered by looking at our pricing. Uh, you can see that there's three different plans, uh, a basic, standard, and pro. Uh, you know, for the basic, this is probably not necessarily for a website because it, it only, uh, you know, it, it would be a small website, um, less than 100 gigabytes of smart bytes. So we, we have a pricing plan that works off of what we call smart bytes. So this, smart bytes are the final optimized uh, payload that's delivered from our edge servers. So that's how we meter and, and charge you. Um, now, you sh in order to calculate how many smart bytes you'll use, you need to uh, run a trial and or run the demo test, get a sense of what sort of image compression uh, payload reduction you're going to get. Um, you know, based upon the number of visits you have, the, the weight of your website, uh, the uh, optimization level payload reduction that we provide, you'll get a sense of you know whether 100 gigabytes is sufficient for you, or you need to move up to the standard plan that has 250 gigabytes. And if you go beyond that, which a lot of our e-commerce players do, um, the websites that you know, we have a custom level where we we scale the pricing. Um, based upon the the payload that you're delivering, um, but a similar a common thing throughout all of this is the HTTPS, the global network that we have, this device aware optimization that is going on automatically. It's there in all of our packages. Um, the advanced control panel that Jan Arn showed you, but there's a there's a lot there. Um, there's a lot of best practices that we we could go on and talk about. Uh, one part about the the site, uh, the control panel is, after you've been up and running, you can see the performance statistics. You can see not only the uh, how much compression you're getting, uh, what sort of payload savings you're getting, but you can also see the cache hit, what your most popular images are that are being served, where they're being served. Um, if you want additional uh, WAF or DDoS protection, the custom uh, pro plan uh, offers that. Uh, there's additional reporting available. Uh, if there's the need for a dedicated edge servers, um, we actually are working with a number of clients who basically want to operate their own uh, CDN. And the way that our edge servers are uh, turned up, not only can we turn up new uh, edge servers anywhere around the globe, but we can also, uh, through our containerization and modularization process, uh, allow you to turn them up on your own private network. Uh, this is a higher level of integration, but just know that it's it's a possible under the pro plan. Uh, and finally, uh, we, we have uh, ticketed online enterprise support that is uh, available around the clock for you. Uh, not only for, for onboarding, but uh, if issues come up, uh, we really pride ourselves in being a, a worldwide company that has excellent customer support uh, no matter where you are. 
Uh, if any other questions, you can type them into the Q&A, but I think, I think we've addressed all of the open ones. Um, let me take this moment to uh, introduce Chandra. Chandra, are you there? Can you join? Yeah, Ken, I'm there. Hi. Hi. Uh, let me just turn it over to you. I think we've covered uh, most of the, the presentation here. Um, if, is there anything you want to add? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, first of all, uh, thanks everyone for uh, taking time out to join the uh, discussion. And uh, it was very good, I think. Um, we kind of covered most of the uh, queries and uh, I guess most of the answer also, answers are also covered. Um, so uh, what we'll do is, uh, yeah, so please feel free to reach out to us from a sales perspective um, if you need some help. Uh, in setting up a trial, uh, you're free to go and register for a trial, or if you need some help, uh, please feel free to reach out to us and uh, we're willing to help and walk you through the setup process. Yeah, and Chandra is there locally in India. Um, likewise, our, our support team uh, around the world is, is, is there to help you if you start the account setup process and have questions about how to either finish that process or integrate it with um, with Magento. Uh, we, yeah. We're actually recording this <laughs> so we can uh, walk through it again uh, with you uh, and and share share this video with you if if need be. Um, but like I said, we're we're always ready and willing to help you with your onboarding challenges. <clears throat>